Hey, this is James with Lot Hill. I'm going to show you how to link your already installed receipt printer to Cache Footprint. Uh, there are videos out there on installing the printer driver for POSX. There's one out there for the Star receipt printers as well. If you've gotten your printer off of Amazon or eBay, that's totally cool. Just make sure you install the driver first so you can access it through Windows. Once that's done, you'll go up to the Tools menu, go to Options, you'll go to the Receipt slash Hardware tab, click on Receipt Printer, and then click Add. You can name this printer. I typically do receipts because I only have one printer. If you have more than one printer, you just add another printer. So if it's a regular printer and then you have a, a kitchen printer, you just add a second printer. So I'm going to call this receipts. I'm going to give it the ESCPOS driver through the software. You can use different drivers depending on what type of printer you have. If it's a generic printer, um, you can use the ESC. All, let me rephrase. All printers will be able to use this um, mode. Uh, star. Micronix receipt printers, you will need to make sure that you change the emulation of the printer to use this. There is a video on that as well. But once you choose the driver, choose your printer, and then make sure you select the proper size. So 12 is for three inch wide, nine would work with two and a quarter inch wide printers. Um, you can choose to print the receipt on demand. So if you'd rather ask the customer if they want a receipt, check that option. Uh, it won't print unless you tell it to. Uh, the, the next option down is print a merchant receipt. This is basically a second copy where the customer can sign. Typically, if you're checking this, um, you would have a scenario where you need a, a, to retain another copy um, because our software, when the, we had the integrated card processing, um, it only prints one receipt and everything is on that receipt. So if you need a second copy, this is where you would do that. If you're using a standalone card processing for some reason that would have its own receipt and they would sign that. So I typically uncheck that because I only want the one receipt. And then on the right hand side here you can see the different scenarios where you can print the receipt. If this is a normal situation just have them all checked. Um, if this is a second printer say for a kitchen you might uncheck all of these except for POS and maybe refund to let the kitchen know that you you want to cancel an order. Um, and same for the targets. With the targets, you can choose which items or groups or customers you want this receipt to print for. Uh, and then on the left hand here, left hand side here, there's a few other uh, self-explanatory options. Uh, and then at the bottom is the receipt layout. So for like kitchens and whatnot, you're going to probably use the minimal with no price because uh, the kitchen doesn't care how much an entree costs. They just need to know that it's been served. So uh, that's all I would do it and then hit test print and once that's okay you click okay adds the printer to the system and then you have the cash drawer. Cash drawers are typically connected to the back of the receipt printer so click add just give it a description you can have more than one drawer if you need to um, and you would choose a different port uh, and pulse length depending on if it's a port one or port two that's referring to the cash drawer port on the back of the receipt printer uh, and then you choose the driver, I like ESCPOS, and then the printer that the drawer is connected to. And then you click test drawer. On the right hand side there's different options, right? So you can open the drawer for different scenarios. Typically it would be cash and check. Um, if you don't have a media slot in the front of your cash drawer, most do. Um, where you can slide the check in, you can slide extra receipts in, that type of thing. Some people, they just like to uncheck that and have the drawer open only for cash, which is totally cool. Click OK there to save it, and then OK to finalize. So the one thing that you may note is if you go ahead right now and click No Sale, if the drawer does not open, but it did open when you were in Options for the test, then you've got a situation where you've already started doing transactions, and you've got your cash drawer in, or your printer in, and you set it up, and you're like, OK, cool, let's, let's start using that and it doesn't work, it's because you need to assign the drawer to the current session. So in my case, I added the drawer after I started doing transactions and it was set to virtual drawer. So I'm gonna go in and change that to the actual drawer and hit save. So now when I close this and go click no sale, it's gonna open my drawer. 
So you might run into that situation. I thought it was worth noting. Uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out. You can reach us at 855-LOT-HILL or email us at product.support at lothill.com.